Welcome to Crime Scene X. In today's video, I am telling three stories that are allegedly true and takes place on a cornfield. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for daily uploads. I really do appreciate all of my subscribers. There is now over 400 of you guys, and it means a lot. Now sit back and enjoy the video. The rusty car rolled along the empty country road, its wheels humming a dismal tune. I should have known better than to hitchhike in such a secluded place, but desperate times called for desperate measures. The driver, a seemingly kind older man with a beard full of grays and whites, had a piercing stare that made my skin crawl. Our journey had been silent until he began muttering to himself, words so soft they were barely discernible. It was when I caught words like purify and sacrifice amidst his murmurs that panic settled in my stomach. My gaze flitted around the car's cluttered interior, my eyes falling upon a collection of sharp implements on the back seat, smeared with rusty stains. We were passing a vast cornfield when my instinct screamed at me to escape. With a pounding heart, I waited for the right moment, then abruptly opened the car door and threw myself out, rolling onto the dusty road. Pain shot through every fiber of my being, but adrenaline fueled my limbs, urging me to get up and run. I sprinted into the cornfield, the tall stalks brushing against me like whispering phantoms. My breathing was labored, and my heartbeat sounded like a death drum in my ears. Behind me, I heard the screech of brakes and the slamming of a car door, the driver's heavy footsteps pounding the ground in pursuit. His muttering was now a chant, a mantra of death that sliced through the whispering corn. The cornfield was a maze, a labyrinthine jungle with the whispers growing more pronounced, as if narrating tales of fear and flight. The rustling of the stalks marked the relentless pursuit of the killer. His voice, intermixed with the soft whispers of the corn, created a cacophony of terror, heightening my senses. I pushed my body to its limits, my legs slicing through the sea of corn, my lungs gasping for air. The sky above was a patchwork of grays and blues, and the setting sun cast long shadows that danced with the whispering stalks, creating eerie shapes and figures. My mind played tricks on me, making me see figures lurking amongst the corn, eyes watching me, whispers turning into soft murmurs of consolation and doom. The labyrinth seemed endless, my pursuer relentless. Just when I thought my legs would give in, I broke out of the cornfield and into an open field. With the last ounces of my strength, I ran towards the nearest house, praying for someone to be home. I could hear the killer's footsteps close behind, his chance a sinister hymn of the impending doom. I reached the house, pounding on the door frantically. It swung open, and a surprised couple pulled me inside, securing the locks immediately after. I could barely utter a coherent sentence, my breaths coming out in ragged gasps, my body on the brink of collapse. The police arrived soon after, and the cornfield became a scene of search and pursuit. The couple tended to me, their comforting words trying to pierce the veil of terror that shrouded my mind. The whispers of the cornfield and the killer's chants echoed in my ears, a symphony of horror that would haunt me forever. The cornfield held its secrets tightly, the whispering stalks swaying gently in the night wind, narrating tales of flight and fear, of shadows and whispers to the silent moon above. And I, a reluctant protagonist in this tale of horror, bore the invisible scars of this ordeal, etched in the whispers of the cornfield and the shadows of the setting sun. I ain't one to scare easily. I've spent nights alone in the woods. I've hunted beasts in the dead of night. But that night, that night in the cornfield, was something I'll never forget. The air was thick and heavy, and the moon was hidden behind dark, looming clouds. I remember it started with this frantic, whispering wind, dancing between the rows of corn, making their long green leaves shiver. It wasn't just the quiet rustling, but I heard footsteps. Footsteps that didn't match the rhythm of my own heart or my own hurried pace. Panic sprouted inside me, a feeling I hadn't known in years. My breath quickened and I spun around, peering into the shadows between the tall stalks. Nothing, nothing but the whispering leaves. I hurried my steps and so did the footsteps behind me, turning from a whisper to a thunderous pursuit. I ran, my heart slamming against my ribcage. Every shadow seemed like a lurking figure every sound a threatening growl. The wind was a banshee screeching in my ears, 
My mind screamed run, but my legs were turning to jelly, every step feeling like I was dragging a hundred pounds. The cornfield seemed endless, the dark labyrinth of green and gold stretching out forever. It felt like running through a nightmare, where escape is just a tantalizing mirage. I couldn't tell if I was crying or if it was sweat streaming down my face. My breath came out in ragged gasps. I could hear him now, the pursuer, his breath almost as ragged as mine, the sound of his feet crashing through the cornfield deafening. And then, out of nowhere, a sharp pain exploded in my side. I almost fell, but fear kept me upright, kept me running, running for my life. My legs were on fire, and I could taste blood in my mouth. Every fiber of my being screamed in pain, in terror. In my blind panic, I didn't see the uneven ground ahead of me. I tripped, my body tumbling down, the ground coming up to meet me with a sickening thud. Pain radiated through my body, but fear, fear was the ultimate master, urging me to get up, to run, to escape. I stumbled to my feet, the world spinning around me, the cornfield a blurry maze of shadows and whispers. And then I saw him, just a few feet away, a hulking silhouette against the whispering corn. He was real, so very real, no ghost, no figment of imagination. My heart stopped, my breath caught in my throat. I couldn't run, I couldn't hide. The darkness around me felt alive, suffocating. He didn't say a word, just watched me with eyes that gleamed in the little light that penetrated the thick canopy of leaves. I was prey, and he was the predator. Every inch of my body wanted to run, to escape, but I was frozen, a statue in this haunting tableau. Then, as sudden as the wind, he moved, and I found my legs again. I ran, not caring about the pain, not caring about the uneven ground, not caring about anything but escape. I ran until the cornfield was a distant whisper behind me, until the dark shadows were replaced by the welcoming lights of civilization. I never looked back, never wanted to see if he was still there, lurking in the shadows. I don't know who he was or why he chased me, but that night, that night in the cornfield will haunt me forever, and the shadows they still whisper to me, whisper of the terror that lurks in the unseen, in the unknown. The air was dry, and the moon was a waning crescent, providing just enough light to cast shadows across the cornfield. The small town I lived in had its share of spooky stories, but I had always been a skeptic. That was until I went to explore Old Man Smith's farm on a dare. Old Man Smith had passed away years ago, and tales of strange happenings around his farm were a regular occurrence at town gatherings. His cornfield was at the center of most of these stories, a sprawling labyrinth of stalks that seemed to whisper secrets to the night air. Determined to prove there was nothing to fear, I set out one night to navigate the cornfield. As I stepped into the whispering stalks, I immediately felt a shiver run down my spine. The whispers seemed to grow louder, a cacophony of hushed voices, speaking words I couldn't comprehend. Then it began, the chase. I heard the rustling first, a rhythmic crunching of dried leaves and stalks. My heart pounded, and I turned to look behind me, seeing nothing but shadows and moonlight playing on the leaves. I tried to brush it off as just the wind or some small animal, but my gut knew better. There was something in the cornfield with me. I quickened my pace, the whispers becoming harsh murmurs around me. The rustling matched my speed, closer now, almost at my heels. Panic welled up inside me and I began to run. I darted between the rows, my breaths coming in ragged gasps. The shadows around me seemed to stretch and reach out, trying to ensnare me. It felt like a living nightmare. The field was a never-ending sea of rustling whispers and shadows. My legs were burning, my lungs screaming for air, but I dared not stop. I could almost feel the breath of my pursuer on the back of my neck, could hear the thumping of their feet on the hard, dry ground. And then, unexpectedly, I stumbled into a clearing. It was Old Man Smith's old barn, the wood weathered and gray, the door hanging off its hinges. I didn't want to, but I knew I had no choice. I had to hide. I slipped inside, crouching behind some old rotting sacks. My heart was a drum in my chest, my breath shaky and loud in the silence of the barn. I strained my ears to listen, the rustling was outside now, circling the barn. Whoever, whatever it was, it knew I was inside. I felt trapped, a mouse in a cat's game. I don't know how long I stayed there, every second stretching into eternity, 
the rustling outside a constant reminder of the presence lurking in the shadows. It was then that the whispers returned, softer now, almost like a lullaby, the words still incomprehensible, but hauntingly beautiful. It was the whispers that broke me. I couldn't take it anymore. I rose from my hiding spot, and mustering every ounce of courage, I dashed out of the barn, back into the haunted sea of cornstalks. I didn't stop running until the whispers and rustling were a distant memory, until the moonlight bathed me in its pale light outside the treacherous field. I was a skeptic no more. There was something in Old Man Smith's cornfield, something that whispered in the night, something that chased unwelcome visitors, and I knew I never wanted to find out what it was. I had heard about a deserted farm at the edge of town that had an old cornfield. People said weird stuff went on there, no ghosts or anything, just strange people hanging around. I decided to check it out myself, see if there was any truth to it. The place was just creepy from the get-go. The cornfield was overgrown, the tall stalks rustling in the wind. I pushed through the cornstalks and heard odd noises, maybe people talking or shuffling around, but I couldn't see anyone. It got weirder when I found chains and stuff attached to wooden posts in the field. It looked like someone had been kept there, and the ground had weird stains. My gut was telling me to bail, but I kept going, curious and a bit scared. That's when I realized I wasn't alone. I could hear footsteps behind me, feel someone's eyes on my back. There were people in there with me, hiding in the corn, watching me, talking about me. I felt trapped. The cornfield was like a maze. Every direction looked the same. I could see shadows moving, hear whispers, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. My heart was racing. I was scared out of my mind. Eventually, I stumbled into a clearing where the moon was shining bright, revealing a group of people wearing masks just staring at me. I was terrified. These weren't ghosts or monsters, but real people, and I had no idea what they wanted. I don't remember much after that, just running as fast as I could until I was out of that horrible place. The memory still freaks me out. It was too real, too scary, and the cornfield is still there, a silent reminder of that terrifying night. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video, comment what you thought, and subscribe for daily uploads.